Well, thanks for joining us this morning. This is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate 117 years since the Wright brothers flew the first airplane ever. A significant moment in not just the history of aviation and space, but in the history of technology. They started something that, you know, uh, we went into World War I, the expansion of uh, aircraft themselves and airplanes and the use of. Uh, Charles Lindbergh, of course, on May 20, 1927, flying across the Atlantic solo. Amelia Earhart flying across solo just five years to the day later. Uh, Chuck Yeager, who just passed away the other day, of course, breaking the sound barrier on October 14, 1927, and we walked on the moon in 1969. But this engine is what started it all. This was a technological breakthrough of such significance. It has uh, uh, had meaning uh, throughout the history of certainly the United States, okay, but all of the world. And our team here built an exact replica of the Spirit engine. This is the Fortis Auto 4. We're going to start it up for you this morning. It's an exciting opportunity to celebrate something very, very special, once again, in aviation uh, history, uh, but also in the history of technology. Can I introduce myself? Yes, sir. I'm Robert McClure. I'm a machinist volunteer at the museum. In 1993, the museum decided they wanted to have a reproduction of the Wright Flyer engine, so on the 100th anniversary in 2003, they would have one to run, and this one has been running ever, ever since. It's a very simple engine. They just wanted to have it so it could prove you could have powered flight. It doesn't have any spark plugs, it doesn't have a carburetor, it doesn't have any oil seals, it doesn't have an oil pump, it doesn't have a fuel pump, but uh, miraculously every year it runs. The hardest thing for the Wright brothers to get was an aluminum casting. That was the most difficult thing and they were finally able to get one. The other thing for us to get, it required Age cast iron for the valves, and we found at a junkyard we found a Coronado manhole cover. So these valves are made out of a Coronado manhole cover. It was if you go back halfway back to 1903, you get to the A12, and that's 1962. The A12 flew 2,500 miles an hour. Kitty Hawk that morning, they had four historic flights. The first one only went 120 feet. That was by Orville. The last and final flight that day was by Wilbur. It went almost the length of three football fields, with, which would be from here up to the Oregon Pavilion, and got up to 31 miles an hour compared to 2,500. My notes. In 1969, a piece of the fabric and the wood from the Wright Flyer went on Apollo 11 to the moon. And now we'll fire it off. The most, what you're going to learn is what it sounded like at Kitty Hawk that morning. And I run it for a very short time because it's a very fragile engine.